It's Monday, July 18th, 2022. I'm going to get right into it today. We got a lot to cover. And I want to start with this. Last night, I was listening to a song by the great band Whitesnake. And many of you may remember that band from back in the 80s. Fantastic band. Lead singer, David Coverdale. And they've had, they had a handful of hits. One of their big hits, Love Ain't No Stranger, was the name of the song. And in that song, there's a verse that goes like this. I looked around and what did I see? Broken hearted people staring at me. And I had to listen to that song a few times last night. And that song is so truthful and relevant, that, that, that verse right there, to what is happening today and what we're seeing. Because when I go out, just like many of you, yes, I see people who are oblivious. Yes, I see 200 cars at the Chick-fil-A. I see people living in bubbles. But I'm beginning to see more and more people who look worried, concerned, broken. And uh, we are going to continue down this road of uncertainty and more and more people are going to begin to realize that they're in big trouble, that um, they're broken and they don't have a plan. And there was an article that came out today on CNBC and here's the title. 75% of middle class households say their income is falling behind the cost of living. 77% expect recession by the end of the year. Uh, the recession is already here. You know this. I know this. But now, these people are beginning to realize this. These people are now admitting to themselves that we're going to be in a recession, even though we're already in one. They don't realize that yet, but they're going to realize it very, very soon. But 75% of households say that their income is falling behind the cost of living. How in the world uh, could the stock market even be up at one point today? Markets across the board closed down in the red. Dow Jones at one point was up 350 points and closed down uh, over 200 points today. Huge swing. And uh, they're blaming it on Apple coming out, saying that Apple may have to lay off people. They're going to slow down hiring, uh, et cetera. We're going to see a lot more of this taking place in corporate America in every industry, whether it's trucking, whether it's tech, uh, you name it, uh, construction, real estate, banking, uh, we're going to see massive layoffs coming to the U.S. job market. And as we uh, dive a little bit deeper into, into this video and talking about brokenhearted people, uh, Sid, many of you know Sid from the show, he took a little mini vacation over the weekend uh, with his girlfriend and they were down in Orange County and he said he just went and got a cheap hotel. He told me that 30 to 40 percent of the occupants of that hotel are living at the hotel. They're not guests. They're, they're not weekend guests. They're living there monthly. 30 to 40 percent. And it's, it, it's kind of uh, interesting because I, was ju I just had watched a video uh, on a channel called Java Discover. And it showed people living uh, in hotels monthly working these minimum wage jobs and just showing how people are struggling working two and three jobs uh, cannot afford rent cannot afford to buy a house they're living in hotels and Sid called me literally hours after I watched this video and uh, told me that 30 40 30 to 40 percent of the people at this hotel he's staying at are living at the hotel so very interesting but uh, this was a really interesting uh, video Java discover they have a bunch of videos just just um, going over and showing the amount of poverty in America, the homelessness, the job crisis. Uh, if you get a chance, check out the channel. Nine million jobs were created since the last recession. But unfortunately, most, most of those nine million jobs are low wage, minimum wage, part time jobs. Americans according to this video, have to work more than ever. Seven days a week, 70 hours, a lot of these people in the video were working. And in the video, and I'm just, I just want to share this video with you a little bit and uh, it, because it relates to what, what Sid just called me over the weekend about people living in hotels, people living in cars. Uh, there was a woman in this video, young woman, three kids, and she's living out of a hotel and 
she's working in the morning uh, at Dunkin' Donuts. Then she goes to her other job uh, at McDonald's. And she's making uh, between eight and nine dollars an hour while her her stepmom is at the hotel watching the kids. Uh, absolutely uh, incredible what people are having to do. But we were told that they saved the economy after 2008, that uh, uh, we have all these jobs, this economic recovery. And this video was showing really the millions of people who suffered after the 08 crisis who are still suffering today. And uh, they just cannot afford to get back up on their feet. And of course, we're not helping these people. We send money all over the world except right here to the people that need it. Uh, sometimes she um, didn't even have a chance to even go to sleep before she went to her next shift. Uh, and, and this woman, this maybe 25 years old, 28 years old, whatever she was, I mean, this, this woman hustled, okay, working two jobs, um, barely seeing her kids, and, and showing these people who are not afraid to work. There are people in America who want to work. And she actually had a really good job before uh, she had some bad luck and lost her job and uh, now, you know, landed up in this, uh, this situation. But she, she was a hustler. And yet she's not getting any help. But the billions of dollars continue to go to other places other than to, to where it needs to go. Um, I'm watching this and I'm just asking myself how, and I don't know when this, when this uh, documentary was shot, if it was a couple months ago or last year, didn't give a date, doesn't really matter because it's all happening right now. And there are people, lots of people living in hotels, living in their cars, living in tents, people working two jobs, three jobs, struggling to get by, not getting any help. And now we have inflation absolutely roaring out of control. How do these people ever get a break? How do they ever get ahead? The reality has, uh, 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 of what is happening right now is putting millions of people into a very, very dangerous situation. And the middle class is becoming the working poor. Thousands of people now living in hotels. This woman with these three kids making uh, a little over $1,000, $850 a month is what she paid for that hotel room. Three quarters of her salary. Three quarters of her salary. Working two jobs. This chick would work three jobs if there was enough time in the day. And I'm looking at her kids eating garbage food and, you know, the price uh, that these kids are going to pay because they're eating the, the, the cheapest food filled with chemicals, filled with filler. Um, and it's just really sad to see. Uh, she bought him a pizza. She had $8 after she bought her kids pizza. She had $8 left to her name after paying taxes and paying bills, paying for food. Uh, $8 left. $8 left. If you're watching this video today, thank God tonight how blessed you really are. Uh, because you have it a lot better than a lot of people out there. If you have a roof over your head, if you, if you had a meal today, uh, if you've got family, it doesn't matter if you're sleeping on the floor, sleeping on the couch, sleeping in the garage. If you've got family and you're eating and you've got a roof over your head, God has blessed you. We must not forget how blessed we are. And this, you know, this girl, she... Uh, she was tough. She was really tough. Uh, really an incredible human being. And it just reminded me how blessed I am and that I'm not living in a hotel room. Because let me tell you, it could happen to anybody. I know there's people out there saying that could never happen to me. It's impossible. It could never happen. Let me tell you, it could happen. And we should all be blessed and thank God for what we have. Seattle, Washington. Uh, so they, they go from, and, and this was originally in Florida near the Disneyland area. So they, they show what's going on there. Then they transition over to Seattle, Washington. And they interview this guy, Joe, 39 years old from California. He's out there looking for construction jobs. And we're beginning to see like these type of economic refugees going to the big cities, going to the uh, hotter uh, markets, trying to find work. And people are just trying to adapt to this economy. And so Joe, 39 years old, and let me tell you, he looked like he was probably 59 years old. No, no offense to Joe, but 
uh, he had a couple kids and a wife, and they were living in a parking lot of a church, and it looked like a little tent city, an encampment of tents in this church parking lot. His wife is a cashier. She works uh, full-time, makes $1,300 a month full-time. He's looking for work. They've got kids. He said that he never thought, he, he said this, I, I never thought I would be in this situation. How many people are going to say that a year from now, two years from now? I never thought I'd be in this situation. I never thought I'd be broke. I never thought uh, my car would be repoed. I never thought that I would default and be foreclosed on, on my house. I never thought I'd be homeless. Uh, these are people. Uh, and I'm sharing this video because these are people where it's already happened to them. They've lost it all. They're now on the streets. They're now in big, big trouble. And how many, many of these people never planned ahead, never thought this could happen to them. And now they're sitting there going, I never thought that this could happen to me. I never thought I'd be in this situation. One million kids plus in this country are living on the streets of America, homeless, homeless, over a million kids in this country, uh, the so-called wealthiest nation. Well, we know it's not. It's the biggest debtor nation. And the standard of living in America is collapsing. Over a million kids in America living on the streets while we send billions all over the world. Uh, absolutely repulsive. In the video, it showed people of all races. It's affecting all races across the board. One person said, Keep going, never stop, don't give up. This is a, uh, a black gentleman living in a tent who actually at some point had a big rap video and I guess at some point was very well known. Uh, I don't remember his name, but uh, they did show the rap video. I guess it was a, it was a big hit at some point. Now this guy uh, and his wife and kid are living in a tent. They go back to Joe, the, the construction worker. They asked him, are you proud to be an American. And Joe said, I'm proud to be an American, but it's hard to find a reason. I love my country. I would die for, I would die for my country, but things have to change. The poor need help. And I agree hundred percent. I agree hundred percent. And I don't think the answer is to give everybody a free house or free tent or free food. I think the answer is we need to be giving people a skill set and we need to be get, getting people real jobs, 40 hour work weeks, uh, tax breaks, manufacturing and production back here in America, that's the only way we rescue ourselves. Uh, the handouts are going to have to stop. That's not the answer. Having a skill set and having a real working economy where we are producing and manufacturing things as a country and selling them across the globe, that's the only way we get out of this mess. And I, I've seen a lot of these shows where people just talk about, well, we need to give more money. We need to, we need to give more, you know, more of these little small houses and more tents and more free food. And that's great. There's people that, that should be a temporary, that, that, that's a bandaid. What we need to be doing is enacting a plan where we're training people, uh, 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 giving them a skill how to do something, opening up these factories that we once had uh, vibrant in America. These factories must open. We must put people back to work. This is the only way we get out of this. Will we do it? Probably not. And that's why America will fall to a third world country. And I pray that I'm wrong. Joe went on to say, I'm ashamed. This is a real blow to my pride. How many people are going to just feel that way when they lose it all? And this is why we're going to see... Uh, excess alcohol abuse, excess drug use, uh, suicides, uh, domestic violence, etc. because people are not going to know how to deal with hitting rock bottom. Erie, Pennsylvania. Now we move on to Erie, Pennsylvania. They showed a union worker there who worked for GE. Uh, seventh biggest company in the world. Profit margins, not big enough. So they began laying off people. And this, what we're going to continue to see right now, what's taking place is these companies are beholden to the shareholders. If the profit margins aren't big enough. They are going to start cutting the fat, which we are beginning to see layoffs every day now. GE laid off 1,353 people. And this gentleman, Tom, in the video, worked at GE for 13 years. And they showed his last day at work. And he was just devastated. 
loved the company, loved what he did. See, this is what's so sad is that there are people out there that love what they do. They love getting up early in the morning and going to work. They love being productive. They love making things. They love earning a paycheck. They love uh, experiencing the American dream, which is now becoming a nightmare. But we are going to continue to watch jobs, especially well-paying jobs, go extinct in America. And we're going to see a lot more people in the same situation as these people in this video are in right now. It's coming. It could happen to you. And this is why I make these videos, so that you are prepared. Have an extra side hustle. Have an extra skill set. Have extra money, cash money put away. Corporate America does not care about you. Corporate America is going to be laying off a lot of people here very, very soon. Over the past 15 years, 5 million industrial jobs have been destroyed right here in the U.S. The jobs and workers that made America a powerhouse are going extinct. Companies want bigger profit margins. So employees now have to work for less. If they don't, these companies move out of the country or they move to other states where they can pay less money. So as we continue to watch the US worker go extinct, what now is about to happen to the housing market? Interesting article came up this morning on CNBC. Home builder sentiment plunges in July as buyers pull back. Home builder sentiment dropped 12 points to 55, largest single drop in the survey's history, the National Association of Home Builders survey. If people are getting laid off, their wages are being cut, if corporate America is moving out of this country, industrial jobs are leaving this country, which they've been doing for decades, how in the world and what in the world is going to support the U.S. housing market? Please answer that. Uh, down below. I would love to know. And how could the markets not have collapsed today uh, on this news of, of Apple possibly laying off, uh, Apple slowing down hiring, and home builder sentiment? Bad, bad news for this economy. Now we could say, well, the banks did well. Well, if you watched or, or read some of the data on CNBC, the banks look great. You go to the hedge, the banks don't look so great. So I guess you'll have to make your own uh, critical analysis, make your own decision on that. But here on the hedge, Bank of America profits tumble. Uh, equity trading miss, loss reserves jump. Revenue rose $1.2 billion, up 6% year over year, but dropped 2% or $500 million from the first quarter. Uh, the hedge today uh, also, Goldman, jumps as traders spark second quarter revenue beat, but total earnings, total earnings plunge 47% amid major investment losses. And then another article today on the hedge, a humiliated Goldman Sachs has quietly lost, get this, quietly lost $2.6 billion investing in stocks in the past four quarters. Those are significant losses. Again, broken-hearted people staring at me. Chaos breaks out when people miss six meals, ladies and gentlemen, six meals. You're going to see big trouble. Anything that can happen probably will happen. If it's possible, it can happen. And what people thought wasn't possible is now possible. We are um, in a time of uncertainty, um, and it, it, it really bewittles me at times. We, we have witnessed a time uh, in our society where we've seen interest rates so low that it's not worth saving. So we've had a society now that says, well, rates are low, so it's worth borrowing. And as um, Doug Casey, I was watching a, a video with Doug Casey the other day. He said, this has driven up asset prices, making people feel richer 
than they are. This is a fool's paradise. People got free money, people got to stay home, produce nothing, make nothing, got paid to do nothing, stay at home. We've had low rates. Uh, people have 10 credit cards. They've had low interest rates on these credit cards. You could go buy a house for 2.8%. And this has created a fool's paradise. So many people today, maybe even somebody out there watching this video, feels rich and wealthy because the price of their home is up right now. I'm here to tell you, don't get fooled. You are in a fool's paradise. This has all been propped up with artificial money. Low rates and a lot of quantitative easing and a lot of printing of money. And this is not going to last. I truly do believe we're gonna wake up on a Monday morning and our world is gonna look a lot different. And so I just wanted to touch on a little bit of this today uh, and, and just share some of the people's experiences out there that might be in uh, Seattle, Washington or Erie, Pennsylvania or somewhere in Florida and that not everybody's lazy. There are a lot of people out there trying, hustling, and unfortunately they're not getting any help. There should be such an incentive for people out there working two jobs, working 70 hours a week, just grinding it out. Why are we not rewarding those people but we reward people to stay at home and run up debt and live in a fool's paradise. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, as I leave you today, if you're in a fool's paradise, you better get out and get out quick. This thing is about to get real. You're going to witness a reckoning. Reality is coming to America. Prepare now. Get ready. If you got to take on three jobs to, to do it, to prepare, cut out those $9 lattes, uh, maybe not go out to lunch. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close with this. People always say, go, oh, I don't have any money for gold. I don't have any money for silver. I, I can't save any cash. I just have bills. Uh, maybe you need to stop going to Starbucks twice a day. Maybe you need to stop going out to lunch every day when you leave the office. Maybe you pack a brown bag lunch. Maybe you get a second job, a third job, a weekend job. You save up some cash. Now you have some capital, right? Now you can buy a little silver. You can buy a little gold. Maybe now you can save up $1,000 and have a $1,000 cash reserve and keep adding to that and adding to that and adding to that. Maybe now you can pay off one of those credit cards. People don't want to make the sacrifice. And those people who are not willing to make the sacrifice today right now, you are going to be living in a nightmare when this collapse hits America. I promise you that. I guarantee that. You will be in a nightmare. Do not come knocking at my door. You're not getting any help. Um, do not come knocking at my door. And for the people out there, you know, I've warned my family, my friends, you know, get ready because I am not going to be able to help you. You're not eating my calories. Uh, you will not be a liability to me. And so I'm making that known. And all of you too uh, need to get in a mental mindset of where we're all going and that people are going to be knocking at your door. Right now, you need to be making sacrifices. All of us do. And the people who don't make those sacrifices right now, they don't deserve your food. They don't deserve you answering that door. They've been warned. You've warned them. I've warned them. This is going to be a reckoning. It is going to be biblical. Get ready.